Hey friends, it's Miss Hoffman. Today I'm going to show you how to draw a aquarium in one point perspective. We've been doing a lot of zoo drawings that pairs with the Cincinnati Zoo um, safaris that they're doing daily and I know a lot of the aquariums are doing free tours of their aquariums uh, via Facebook Live and I know Ripley's uh, Aquarium in the Mountains has been doing a lot of videos daily and my girls and I have been watching some of those and they have been a lot of fun. So we are going to be drawing an aquarium and this is what they call a lot of times a shark tunnel. Sometimes they have a uh, conveyor belt that is going down the shark tunnel. We're going to draw a cool checkerboard floor down the middle of the shark tunnel. But if you look at this, what one point perspective means is everything looks like it's kind of lining up the floor, the tiles, the walls of glass, the ceiling, everything's going back into that middle point. That creates a sense of depth, which means it looks like it's going back in space. So when we're doing this, we also have to pay attention to our foreground, middle, and background and background. So this shark that's in the foreground looks a lot larger than his little buddy back here that's in the background because this one's supposed to look like it's farther away. This jellyfish and this jellyfish look bigger than these tiny little jellyfish way back here because they're supposed to look farther away. So it creates a sense of depth when we pay attention to our foreground, middle ground, and background and place things accordingly. So we're going to learn how to do that today. First, we have to find the middle point because we want everything to look like it's going back to that single point in our one point perspective. So an easy way to do that is just to fold our paper in half like a card and then fold our paper in half again. And when we do this, in the middle, where our lines, our folded lines intersect, we're gonna be able to find the true middle of the paper. So I'm going to put a tiny dot right there in our middle and that is going to be our point where everything in our one point perspective drawing is going to connect to, to give it that sense of depth and going back in space. Now, first we want to draw the lines for the floor, the lines for the walls, the lines for the ceiling. So if you look at this, it is really just a big giant X through the middle of the paper. Some of you have drawn these aquarium drawings with me before in class, and they're super fun. And you remember that when I told you it was just mainly a big X through the middle of paper and the rest was not so hard, you guys thought I was crazy. But it really is just a giant X through the middle of the paper. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with that giant X. Now, if I just drew a big X through the middle, I might get off center. So I'm going to take it slow, and I am going to do this by doing from the dot to the corner, from the dot to the corner, from the dot to the corner, from the dot to the corner. So I'm gonna go slow. I would want you guys to do this with pencil and not marker. So if you have a marker in your hand right now, you might wanna pause me for a second, a second and grab a pencil. I'm gonna do it in marker so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna go from the middle to the corner. From the middle to the corner. From the middle to the corner. And from the middle to the corner. So it is a giant X through the middle of my paper. Next, I'm gonna start building the floor. And this floor looks tricky, but it's really not. To draw a checkerboard floor going in perspective is not hard, I'm gonna teach you how to do that. First, we need a straight line down the middle and that folded line that we did really helps you with that. So you're just gonna trace that folded line to start. So that's a pretty easy step. Next, we're going to divide this section in the middle with a diagonal line, and this section down the middle with a diagonal line. If that's hard for you, you can find about the middle point right here, and just connect the middle to that middle point with a diagonal line, and then do the same thing over here. Find about the middle point, and then connect the middle to that with a diagonal line. So this looks like when we draw the farm drawings in perspective, looks like the rows in the fields. But we want to turn this into a checkerboard floor. So we're gonna start by drawing a straight horizontal line, but we're gonna kinda keep it close to the middle here because we want that first row of checkerboard floor to be look like it's far away, so we want it to be smaller. Then we want the second row to be a little bit larger, the third row to be a little bit larger, 
the fourth row to be a little bit larger and then a little bit larger. So I have it pretty close to that line. Now I'm gonna spread it out just a little bit and draw another horizontal line, trying to keep it straight. If you have a ruler, this would be a good time to break that out. Now I'm gonna draw another line, keeping it pretty straight, but remember it's a little bit spaced out, a little bit farther because we want it to look like these tiles are getting closer to us. So they're getting, looking, appearing to look larger as they get closer. Now we are going to draw the panels of glass on the side walls. So this triangular shape is one side wall. This triangular shape is another side wall. We want to draw these panels of glass. Now, in order to do that, we have to draw these beams to look like the window panes that are holding together those big, thick, thick, thick panels of glass to hold all that water. So I'm going to start where my floor line is and I'm gonna go straight up from where my floor line is. Excuse my lines if they're a little crooked. Miss Hoffman doesn't have her ruler. And then I'm gonna go straight up from where that floor line is on both sides. Straight up from where the floor line is. Straight up from where the floor line is. Straight up. Straight up. Straight up. Straight up. And I think some of my lines got crooked, so just pretend they're straight, guys. Now, we have our checkerboard floor and we have our beams on the side to hold all those glass panels. Now we need an arched ceiling, because a lot of times in these shark tunnels they have the arched, domed glass ceilings, and we're gonna do that by just drawing rainbow arch shapes. So I'm gonna connect this line to this line with a rainbow arch shape. This one to this one with a rainbow arch shape. Remember to do this in pencil, that way if you mess up, you can erase. And if Miss Hoffman's going too fast, pause me and catch up. That's the good thing about watching these videos. You can't pause Miss Hoffman in class, so you can just pause me and catch up or rewatch something again. Connect this one to this one with a rainbow art shape. And then I, this one I'm gonna run out of room, right? So I have to go until I run out of room and stop. Go until I run out of room and stop. Okay, so now I have a floor. I have a sidewall, sidewall, top. Now, when we start adding stuff in, we want this to look like an aquarium. So we want this to be water, this to be water, this to be water. Don't draw fish on the floor, okay? So that's gonna be the floor that the visitors are gonna walk down. So first we want to draw some sand or some coral or some seashells or starfish or some seagrass to, because they want these aquariums to feel like a natural habitat for these fish and these sea creatures. So they try to put a lot of that stuff in there. So I'm gonna draw some sand. It doesn't have to be that thick. On this one, I put it pretty thin on this side, thicker on this side, just so you can kind of see a comparison of which way you might like it, thick or thin. But if I put a starfish here, I need to make sure it looks fairly big so you can see. But if I put one way back here, it's gonna be itty bitty. Remember our foreground, our middle ground, and our background. We wanna make sure that where we place it, it makes sense. So if I draw some seagrass here, it can be pretty tall. Squiggly line up, squiggly line down. Squiggly line up, squiggly line down, down. Or if I draw some coral up close, big organic shape. Remember organic shapes are kinda like our blobby natural shapes. If I draw some coral here, it can be pretty big, but if I draw some coral back here, it's gonna be pretty small, or some seagrass back here, it's gonna be a lot shorter than the one in the foreground, so pay attention where you're placing things. If I'm gonna draw a seashell again up here with maybe a rainbow art shape, with some lines, it's gonna be bigger than one way back here. So pay attention where you're placing things. Now, how to draw some of these sea creatures? Let's say I want to draw a seahorse. Now, you might wanna draw your seahorse a little smaller than what I'm gonna draw them. I'm gonna draw them right up here in my foreground so I can, it can draw them a little bit bigger. But remember, seahorse, uh, seahorses are small. But I'm gonna draw them a little bit bigger than I normally would just so you can see what I'm doing. I would start off with a rainbow art shape for his head. Then I would go out for his nose. 
Maybe a little bump on the end of his nose. Straight line for his back. Then I would go loop up and curve around for his tail. Now, going back to his nose, I bring his down his nose a little bit and in. While I'm messing with his nose, I might put a little dot in his nose, a little line for his mouth, maybe some bubbles coming out of his nose. Give him a big eye. Then from his chin to his tail, I'm gonna connect it with a big round belly because seahorses have some round bellies there. Give him a little round belly. Maybe give him a little um, fin, like a triangle fin on his side. And they typically have little coarse skin or little spikes on their skin to protect them from pet predators, so I'm gonna give him a little spiky mohawk. Now, if I was gonna draw him, I might draw him a little smaller than that, but if he's in the foreground, it might be okay for him to be that big. If he's in the background, you're gonna draw that little seahorse itty bitty way back there because he's so far away, okay? Now, a fish, we, there's lots of different ways to draw fish, but if I was gonna draw a fish, I might draw an oval or a circle, maybe a little triangle on their booty like there for their back tail fin and some lines. And then I could draw a face on there, maybe a top fin and a bottom fin with just a little rainbow arch and smiley face shape. And then I can turn a rainbow arch shape on its side to draw a little scales, just like you would scales on a mermaid's tail. All right, if I draw that fish here, he's gonna be big and I'm gonna be able to see all those details of the scales. If I draw him way back in the background, I might not see as many details on this little fish because he's so far away. Okay, jellyfish, a simple way to do it is a rainbow arch with a flat bottom with squiggles coming out. Remember if they're back here, they're gonna be itty bitty. An angelfish might be a fun one to draw. They're more triangular shaped with a triangular back fin. With some stripes on them and some lines in their fin. Maybe bubbles coming out of him. If I have one in the middle ground, he'd be a little bit smaller because he's a little bit farther away. Now, sharks. If I'm gonna draw a shark, I'm gonna draw him pretty close right here so I, you can see all the details. I'm gonna start with a curved line. And don't worry about these lines in the aquarium going through your shark's body because if I'm standing right here and I'm inside the aquarium, if the fish is right here and inside the aquarium and I'm looking through the glass but there's a beam right here, Part of the fish I'm gonna see on this side of the beam, on the left side of the beam, part of the fish I'm gonna see on the right side of the beam. So that beam's gonna look like it's going straight through the fish, but that's just because the fish is on this side of the tank, okay? So if these beams go through, don't worry about it, okay? So if I put a jellyfish right here, it's okay if half the jellyfish is on this side and half the jellyfish is on this side because it might be swimming right there where that beam is in our line of sight. So I'm gonna start off with a curved line for the top of the um, shark with a triangle shape on his back. And then I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna open his mouth, kinda like Pac-Man mouth. Okay, or a letter V laying on its side. I'm gonna give him some teeth, little triangular shapes. Then I'm gonna curve in his chin, and give him another little triangle shape on his belly. Curve down his back, curve up his belly. Then I'm going to go out, out, kind of like a letter V again, lots of letter V's on a shark. In, in, and of course I can add a lot more details to my shark than that, make him look a little bit more realistic, but this one is a pretty easy cartoon shark to start. I'm gonna give him some lines in his neck I'm gonna give him kind of a football shape eye with a circle inside that, with a line inside that, and give him a mean little shark eye. 
Now that shark's really close, swimming close up in the foreground. If I had one back here, he's still gonna look bigger than those jellyfish because he's a shark, guys. But he's going to look smaller because he's swimming so far away. Okay, remember in Finding Nemo when Dory and uh, Nemo's dad come up against a whale and they see him from far, far away and they think they're just talking to a fish and the closer he gets and the closer he gets and the closer he gets, they realize he's a whale. Same thing, he looks like a fish from far away, but that's just because he's so far away, they're gonna be smaller in the background. So anywhere where I place something, I'm gonna think about how close is this to me before I place it and then scale it appropriately. Then I would color this in, color in the floor, maybe with an AB pattern. You can see on my uh, floor, I have an AB pattern here. So I have black, white, black, white, black, white, black, white. Um, I could also do any two colors and just make sure it's alternated. And notice, notice wherever I have black, white, black, white, then white, black, white, black, black, white, black, white, then white, black, white, black and so on. I colored in all my sea creatures with markers. That way you can see it a little bit better. And then I went back and lightly colored in my water with a crayon, that's a good tip. But just remember the main tip here is if you are drawing something in the foreground, it needs to look larger. If you're drawing something in the middle ground, scale it back a little bit. If it's drawing, drawing it in the background, make it very small so that you can tell the difference between your foreground, middle ground, background, and you can have that sense of depth in your picture. I hope you enjoy this. I hope we uh, get to see some aquarium drawings. We would love for you to share. Feel free to post your pictures um, on the Facebook pages or on the school websites or wherever we're, I'm posting these for different schools. And I miss you guys and I hope to see you soon. Bye.